Welcome to the counselor tutorial for managing patient devices. We we'll begin here in a patient's profile and then click on the devices tab. Here you can see there are two devices currently in place for this patient. Now, there are different ways you can get devices in place. Of course, you can always add them directly here in the devices tab by clicking on new device. Uh, another very common workflow is by entering devices through the invoicing process. In fact, this is the most common way that devices are added into counselor. In this scenario, we're going to go through the invoice has already been created, uh, the device information has been entered, uh, and now we can see the device information here within the devices tab. We can also see just very simply that there is a less than one symbol um, in the devices tab telling us that the patient's uh, active devices are less than one year old. Um, just little tools to show you what's happening uh, with these devices. In addition to the fact that you can see, the, of course, the specifics of those devices right here from the devices tab. Uh, now, regardless of how you get the data entered, uh, the device data entered into Counselor, the management of the devices is the same, meaning that you can manage the activity of the devices, you can create repair forms, you can track what's happening uh, overall regarding these devices. So we'll go through a, a, a few of the main uh, processes here. Now, first off, just by hovering over the uh, device profile itself, you can see a, a, an audit trail of what's happened for this device over time. Now, because we just created this as a sample, you see this all have the same date. Uh, but normally you'd have, you know, when the device was originally added, when the order, if you said it is not submitted, and then you put the order in, and then it was received and delivered back to the patient, right? So you'd see that whole audit trail over time. And then that keeps going forward as devices go out for repair, come back from repair, get refit. So at a moment's notice, you can simply hover over the device and see all of that information. You can also link directly to the invoice in which these devices were involved uh, if you wish to see that information. When, when, from an invoice, you can link back into this device profile if need be as well. So very easy to move back and forth between a device profile and the invoices as needed. All right, so let's just look through some active kind of management of these devices. And let's start with a scenario where these devices need to go for repair, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here first on the uh, repair option towards the top, right? That will bring open an option where we can choose, uh, you know, who the manufacturer is. We can select, you know, rush or standard shipping. I believe these were Phonak devices. Of course, they could be any devices. Uh, you can add any notes, for example, like a PO number or anything else you wish to communicate to that manufacturer for the purposes of the repair. Uh, you can ask them to call for an estimate. Uh, this, uh, this setting is automatically in place to save repair form in the patient document. So it'll keep uh, a copy of this repair form automatically available within the patient document section for later review. Uh, but we're going to move ahead here to device one. This is where counselor will show a list of the available uh, active devices you have in this patient's profile. You can go ahead and choose whichever one you want and then select what the concerns are, right? So let's just say this device is dead. Um, you also, by the way, could add modifications. If this is like a custom device, you could put any modifications needed, any notes. Uh, by default, counselor will set this as repair out. But if it is a modification, let's say, of a, a custom device, then you could switch this over to remake. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and add the second device. Now, it is important to note that as you add these, counselor is looking to see whether or not this device is in warranty. If it is, of course, it leaves it as in warranty. If not, it will set it as out of warranty. And then you can choose which option you wish to proceed with, all right? But in this case, we'll proceed with these uh, devices being in warranty. I'll say this one is noisy and fades, okay? And of course, you could add more if you had accessories, maybe the streamer, remote control, whatever else you need to add, you can do so uh, within the same repair form. Now, once you click Create Repair Form, Counselor is going to generate a PDF of the repair form. Uh, of course, it'll have your logo, your information, your bill to and ship to information will automatically populate. And then it has the specific information that the manufacturer needs in order to proceed with that repair, even though this is not the manufacturer's specific form. They are still accepted by all manufacturers. So it gives you a, a singular process to go through when you want to submit a, a repair regardless of the manufacturer. Now, at this point, you would simply just go ahead and print off one version, uh, one uh, copy of this repair form put it in the box with the repairs and send it off, okay? You only need one copy because counselor is automatically saving a copy of that repair form to the uh, document section. And so it gives the ability anytime to hop back in here and see the repair form that we just created, okay? A copy of the repair form is also available within the device profile. Uh, if we scroll down to the bottom, we will see in the related document section, 
this is where you can bring open that PDF and review it later. It's also important to note that this section is where you can add documentation as well, specific for this device. So uh, order forms, or I should say order uh, forms you receive with a new order, uh, forms you receive um, from repair, you know, when the repair is completed, can all be saved within this uh, device profile, if you wish. It also, those also can be saved back in the document section. So that's up to you how you wish to, um, to handle uh, those papers. Uh, but of course, once you have them saved in Counselor, then you can shred them because uh, you have them stored safe and sound uh, and, and accessible in Counselor. Okay. Um, now the process for uh, updating information in Counselor, as I mentioned, these are devices that are already in place. You can hop in here anytime and modify this information as needed. So uh, if you take an alternate example where we order the devices, but we haven't, uh, you know, we don't have, of course, the uh, serial number and the trial dates and the warranty dates, many times you're not going to have that information yet. So you'd have the device profile created, you place the order, uh, and then when you receive the devices, you of course can pop in here and enter this information. Now, to prevent you from having to enter that information twice, once you filled this out and made any customizations that you need, you would then select uh, at the bottom here, the copy option. This copy option will then uh, take the, the, the information you put in, right, all those dates and everything, and copy it over to the linked device. So counselor knows that when you put these both into um, an invoice, uh, you did it at the same time, so they're linked, and so it would then copy over you know, those dates and everything to the other device, okay? But of course, you can enter uh, the other device's serial number specifically, because of course, that's gonna be different, okay? So a lot of flexibility within the uh, device profile itself to change as needed. And just very quickly, some other features at the bottom here, Beyond the related documents, you do have the ability to uh, uh, start, have a battery plan uh, for this patient and track available uh, shipments of batteries. Uh, you can log shipments of batteries. And so at any time, you can see within uh, the device profile or larger within the patient profile, you can see uh, what their availability is regarding their battery plan. Okay. Um, when we jump back to the main screen here. So let's let's talk briefly about, you know, kind of continuing this process with the repair, okay? So we've sent this out for repair uh, and we get it back, great. So uh, you of course can go ahead and you can update the activity, but it doesn't always work out that smoothly, right? And this may relate to new orders as well, or Remix or L&D or whatever the case may be. So just by having this device in uh, an activity status, so repair out, that means it's then trackable from the dashboard. And specifically, it's trackable uh, from the patient device's activity dashboard widget. Uh, this gives this widget specifically gives you the ability to track uh, devices in some stage of activity, whether you want to look at all your clinics, if you have multiple locations, or if you want to zero in on a specific location. All right? In this case, we'll keep it to all. And then it's basically saying, hey, show us all the devices that are currently out for repair or show us they're out for order or need to be submitted or uh, our L&D and they're received and sitting on the shelf, right? Or in-house drop-off that are, you know, are waiting to be looked at. Point being is you can see this information at a moment's notice. So there are the two repairs that we just entered. And you can see if something perhaps is out there too long, right? If we're looking at this and we say, okay, there's fine, there's fine, but you know what, boy, we should have those back by now. Point being is we want you to see that information very quickly, very easily, be able to follow up with the manufacturer, before the patient, you know, uh, gets unhappy with you, we want you to see information very quickly. Now, once you receive the repairs, of course, you can, you know, jump back into the device profile. You can make any changes as needed. Uh, and then, of course, once again, you can update the status of this device, or the, I should say the activity status of this device. You can do so directly from within the device itself. You also can do that uh, within the uh, device tab here within the patient profile. So it's simply as, as simple as clicking on activity. Okay, we'll select the two devices. Of course, if there were more, you know, any accessories, we could choose all of them in one go and then say, all right, this is a repair that is no longer out. It is received and you can add any notes as, as you see fit. And so we're gonna go ahead and update the status. And so now, or the activity status. So now we're gonna see uh, that the repair is received. Okay, so if we went back to the dashboard, we would see that these two devices now have changed on that dashboard widget. Um, 
you then have the ability, of course, within Counselor to uh, use other systems to help with this process. So you then can create a task, for example, to remind yourself or someone else on staff to reach out to this patient, to contact them, to pick up their devices. You know, whether they need an, an appointment, whether there'll be a charge, that can all be included within the task tasking system. Okay, uh, but let's say the patient uh, has come back in. We have uh, delivered the patient, uh, delivered devices back to the patient. We would jump back in here and say, okay, let's update the status once again to really kind of the status quo status, meaning that this is what it means when it, when everything, you know, the patient has the devices and you're no longer actively tracking these devices. Okay, so now they're just back to primary. Uh, if we went back to the dashboard widget, we wouldn't see them anymore. But as I referenced before, when you simply hover over the um, device itself, you see that audit trail. Right. Once again, these would all not typically be on the same date, but it gives you the ability to very quickly just see what's happened over time for these devices. So if you had a patient sitting in front of you or calling on the phone and they are pretty unhappy, right? And they're saying these, these devices have gone up for repair three times this year. Whether or not you were involved with any of those repairs, you're not flipping through pages. You're not having to remember looking or looking through chart notes. You just hover the device and you can say, oh, you know, I, I do see your devices went out twice this year. You know, once in April and once in October, that's certainly more than we'd expect. Let's look into this, right? But you have that information right in front of you. You're not having to try to figure out on the fly, okay? Now, um, activity status is, is really just tracking what's happening on an ongoing basis for this device. When we look a little further to right here, there's also the ability to change the, the kind of the overall status for this device. Basically saying, hey, is this an active? Is this a secondary? Is this an inactive? Or what's happened for this device? Same idea, we can bring this open, we can select the two devices that we want to change the status for, and then we can note uh, what's happened for these devices. It's important to note that several, a few of these will um, happen automatically. For example, if a device is returned, exchanged, or canceled, you would start off by going into the invoice and setting that uh, that item in the invoice as returned, exchanged, or canceled. And then counselor will automatically update the status in the device profile for you. So you wouldn't need to go in here and do this manually. That's part of you know the, the larger process of returning those devices on the invoice. But you certainly could set this device as secondary or inactive. Uh, you could say that it was replaced by the manufacturer. Uh, and I should note that if you do the replace by manufacturer option, it kicks off a whole process behind the scenes in Counselor where it then copies over the relevant warranties and everything. It, it, it uh, deactivates the original or inactivates the original device, creates a new device profile. It removes the L&D warranty date. Uh, so it, what it does is very quickly, it, sh it, it kind of shows you the process that's happened. And so later on, when you look in the patient's device profile, you know, okay, that device uh, was you know, was replaced by the manufacturer. Here's the new one, right? And and you go from there. Um, as I mentioned, that that process once again is largely kicked off within within the uh, um, I, sh I should reference back here within the activity tracking. So if you chose the uh, LND uh, received, that's going to kick off that you know is there a change in the serial number? So a lot of this activity that we're seeing. Um, in the device status is driven by other areas of the system. So this is a tool you can use, but likely wouldn't use very much, okay? Now on this uh, uh, kind of, we're looking through this top level here, there's a, of course an option for adding a new device. As a reference, there are different ways of getting devices in the system within Counselor, and we likely would work with you directly to find the most efficient and kind of like uh, uh, intuitive way for you to do so. And that's largely based on your particular uh, workflows. When you take the first payment from the patient, is that the consult? Is that the first fitting? Is it uh, uh, after the trial period, right? Uh, that sometimes will dictate the, the process. So we'll work with you directly on that. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our support team and we can talk that through with you. But there are plenty of other times when you just need to add a device, right? So let's say uh, you want to add a loaner for this patient, right? For those devices that are out for repair. Let's say uh, you have new patients to your practice and they have devices from elsewhere. So you may just pop right in here and put in the new device information, right? If this is a, a scenario where it's a loaner, you choose the device type, and then you'll see the loaner device uh, option pop up, and you can see any of your uh, loaners that are available, of course, and then fit them for this patient. You then can check them back in from this screen uh, once the patient brings that device back.
Okay. Now, as I've referenced uh, a few different times here, there are a lot of different tools for uh, tracking devices. I've talked about, you know, the dashboard. Uh, there are also tools under the business administration, uh, business uh, business report generators, I should say, uh, specifically for the business uh, uh, reporting report generator. So a lot of different ways to not only track uh, act device activity in real time, but also see more aggregate data about what's happened with devices, you know, clinic wide or if you have multiplications company wide. So for those specific questions, we're very happy to talk with you directly uh, to figure out how we can most efficiently help you get the information that you need. Of course, once again, with any of these areas, if you have questions, please give us a call, email us, live chat us. We are always happy to help. So thank you very much for joining us for the uh, counselor tutorial on managing devices.